What might a deal between the feds and the provinces look like? Health Minister Jean-Yves Duclos is here. Hi, Minister Duclos. Pleasure to welcome you here. I appreciate you making the time for the program. Thank you, Vashi, and hello to everyone listening. Uh, Minister, I wanted to start off by asking if it is your objective, your aim, to work towards a 10-year agreement with the provinces on the Canada health transfer. Well, our objective is twofold. First, obviously, to come to those agreements, and we hope to do that as, as quickly and as, 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 quick, as, and as efficiently as we can. But our second objective is obviously to get the right results for workers and patients. We know how difficult it's been in the last three years with COVID-19. We also know that the long-term uh, pressures on the health workforce, on health workers, are significant. So we want to get the right deal for, for patients and workers across Canada. And certainly on that accountability side of things, I have a, a number of questions for you. But just trying to get a sense for Canadians watching of what it is that, you know, at the end of these negotiations, they will come away with. Is it, for example, less of the back and forth through the media over the last number of years and a permanent, you know, long-term deal? That is what the provinces have been asking for. Are you, for example, open to a 10-year agreement on the Canada health transfer? So what we want to do is to get the results for Canadians. So how long and how much money, that's also very important. We want to get better access to family health teams in Canada for everyone. Six million Canadians don't have a family doctor now, in, especially in remote and rural areas. We want to recruit, to recognize the credentials of more healthcare workers, but to, re to retain them uh, as well. So it's not about dollars, as most premiers have now openly said. It's about results for Canadians. We know that those results matter in the long term, especially because our population is aging, our population of workers is also aging, more chronic diseases, more infectious diseases, the cost of drugs and technology that's also increasing quickly. So we know that there are the pressures on people and workers and patients is going to increase over the next years. We want to be there for them. The provinces haven't exactly said that money doesn't matter. They, they've said that they need money to do what the objectives you laid out are, right? That there's, yes, that's important and there needs to be reform in the healthcare system, but they also need dollars to do it. Uh, do you concede that the 3% escalator to the Canada health transfer is not enough? Well, the, that's a good question, but let's talk about the percentage point increases in the CHT, the Canada Health Transfer. The CHT increased by 5% just uh, a few months ago in March 2022. It's going to increase by an additional 10% just in March 2023. In addition to that, we've sent $72 billion you know, to address the, the challenges caused by COVID-19. We've also invested $2 billion just a few weeks ago in helping deal with the uh, crisis in hospitals. Uh, situations and we as you said we're investing more in additionally more in health in mental health in long-term care and home care so those are all additional dollars additional to the CHT which again is going to increase again by 10% in March so that is a lot of financial resources coming from the government of Canada what we hear from provinces and territories we want to transform that into resource for people workers and patients so, so what I'm I, I guess I, I understand all that. What I'm not clear on, though, is whether the government, by your own math even, will change the formula from what it is now. You adopted what the Harper government had put forth as uh, a reduction in the escalator. You adopted that formula. I take your point that the math is uh, evolving and that certainly there's a lot of other money that has flowed from the federal government to the provinces on health care. But when you look at the prospect for an agreement, are you looking at increasing more permanently the escalator? Will it be 6%? Will it be 7%? Do you concede that it should be higher than the formula you brought in or adopted from the Harper government? I understand and appreciate the interest, uh, your interest in the accelerator. That 3% is a, a lower bound. For many years now, that lower bound has been surpassed. In COVID-19, no, we have, as you said, as you know, we have increased transfers very much in addition to the CHD, as I said, 5% last year, 10% again uh, in March uh, 2023. So that 3% escalator is, uh, is an interesting uh, bound, but it's not the actual thing that matters for provinces and territories. But uh, what matters is the actual dollars that are currently and will be flowing to provinces and, ter and territories. And, and am I to interpret that that likely there won't be a change in the formula as it exists right now? Well, the Prime Minister has been clear that there will be two things. First, an increase in the CHT, the Canada Health Transfer, in addition to all of those increases that we summarized a couple of minutes ago. And he said there will be bilateral 
transferred bilateral agreements to point to specific things that we all know all provinces and territories want to do. And again, it's about family health medicine, mental health, you know, reducing the backlogs in surgeries and diagnostics that are so significant and so uh, troublesome across Canada, and investing in data so that patients can access to their electronic, me med med electronic medical record and that workers, healthcare workers, pharmacists, physicians, nurses can exchange data on their patients, that when people go to an emergency department, we don't have to redo the same test and people don't have to wait before they can you know, reveal their allergies and their, the drugs they're taking, their medical history, which sometimes is still shared through faxes, which take a, mu a lot of time, cost a lot of money, and lead to safety concerns for patient care. In layman's terms, though, will the agreements that your government strike force that to happen? Like, I know that you're talking about accountability, you're uh, so accurately identifying all the issues that exist in the system. Are you plainly saying, though, in exchange for this money, this has to be fixed by the date of X, Y, or Z? Like, how for, for Canadians who are watching, like, how will they know they'll get a fa family doctor? Is your money going to ensure that? Is your government going to ensure that? Well, two things we absolutely want to do, and all everyone agrees until now, is that we want to lead to better outcomes and results for patients and workers. And the second thing, we also uh, are going to work flexibly with provinces and territories because they are not at the same place. There are some provinces in Canada where access to family health team is almost 90%. Other provinces is below 80%, and that's, that's something we, we should recognize and should work uh, with provinces and territories to address. What happens though, I take the point that the provinces are all different, right? What happens you make a deal with Alberta, let's say, and you, you say, okay, we, w we want this money to lead to more access to primary health care physicians and you need to get it up to this number. Like, is that how it's going to work? And if they don't, what, the money is held back? So we'll be... No. First, we have to respect the fact that it's provinces and territories that are responsible for the actual delivery of health care to their citizens. And that's a difficult job. And so the responsibility, one responsibility of the federal government is to acknowledge that it's their role and their responsibility to do that and not to try to pretend that we should be micromanaging the health care systems across Canada. The second thing that we should always do is that we share the same responsibility, different roles, the same responsibility to use the same tax dollars from the same people for the same from the same people and for the same uh, patients and workers. And the third thing we also all want to do, and I think is we're going in the right direction, certainly in a better direction now than just a few months ago, is to insist on the importance of results. Very few of the people that listen to us now uh, mat, well, ma are very interested in tax points or percentage points. What they want to see is better outcomes and results for their loved ones, for their children, their parents, when they need health care. Okay, Minister, I'm going to leave it there. I'm out of time. Thank you for your time. Thank you.